Good evening. Uh, this is a regular meeting of the Fairhaven Planning Board. Adequate notice of this meeting has been given pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act. At the time of the board reorganization in January of this year, the board adopted its regular meeting schedule for the year. Notice of the schedule was sent to and published in the Asbury Park Press and the Two River Times on February 9, 2023. That notice was also posted on the bulletin board in Borough Hall and has remained continuously posted there as required by the statute. A copy of the notice is and has been available to the public and is on file in the office of the Borough Clerk. A copy of the note of the notice has also been sent to such members of the public as have requested such information in accordance with the statute. Adequate notice having been given, the board secretary is directed to include this statement in the minutes of this meeting. So um, I'd like to call the meeting uh, to, to order and uh, and we'll start with the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice. Uh, Sandy, can you start with the roll call? Mr. Order Here. Ms. Book? Here. Ms. Patch? Mr. Viola? Here. Mr. Roll? Here. Mr. Nitka? Mr. Anderson? Here. And Mr. Olson? Okay, so uh, we, we do have a quorum present. And uh, we, we have no old business. We'll start with, uh, with new business we have, which is a status update on the Department of Public Works renovation project. We'd like to welcome Councilman Lava Rare. Good evening. You guys mind if I have a seat? Yeah, have a seat. Oh, yeah. Um, really appreciate the time and opportunity to be back uh, providing some good news and updates, um, similar to the process with the PD Community Center, although slightly less of priority. Um, given that there's no mold and um, safety issues. Um, I wanted to take a few minutes to just provide a status update and kind of outline what the next couple of months is going to look like. Um, and then, you know, allow an opportunity for any questions that you might have. So the um, DPW project that I believe was approved uh, previously, similar to the Phoenix Community Center, was a new bubble building. It consisted of significant site improvements. Um, it's been significantly scaled down. Um, to include a renovation of the building and then site modifications. Um, there's, there's a few different um, key pain points, I'll call them, with the DPW building at large. One is the fact that it's an industrial site in a residential area, uh, the landscaping buffer, the recycling center, then the aesthetics to include the fence and the building itself. So over the last probably two months, we spent a tremendous amount of time working with residents that were involved, previous committees, to get an understanding of how we wanted the renovation to go. And we're at that inflection point. So the, the next couple of months really is gonna pan out as follows. And there's quite a few assumptions built in. And if you want me to go through them, we're than happy, but we wanna kind of keep a high level. We're gonna have two public open houses again, similar that we did with the PD and Community Center. First one's May 20th, this Saturday, 9 to 11 a.m. Second one's May 31st, uh, that's an evening one at 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. We purposely picked Saturday and a week night, given the um, previous open houses success, specific to folks that come on Saturday are juggling, are juggling sports and a myriad of items, and the folks that come during the week have a little bit more flexibility to be out there. Um, we're beginning the conversations to present to the TDRC, the Technical Design and Review Committee, um, and I've kept the chair uh, closely apprised of those developments to have the meeting after that. And while I know that as well, we'll, we would like to make a request sometime in June, um, if not July, in a normal pre-scheduled meeting. We're not coming uh, requesting a, a special meeting. And I really want to call that out because it was really important for me personally to make sure to the board that we were discerning priorities. If everything's a priority, nothing's a priority. If everything's on fire, nothing's on fire, right? So there's nothing at this point in time leading us to assess the need to call a special meeting and go through uh, that process that you so graciously supported us before. Um, again, thank you for that. Um, and then um, our goal is to attempt 
the time, the renovation, I call it swig and a half because it's a renovation versus like shovel the ground in PD Community Center to time swing of a hammer around four to six weeks after PD and community center begins. And the reason for that is we want to allow enough time to get PD and community center going and then engage our owner's reps who are now going to support the PD, the community center and the DPW projects, get them up to speed on DPW because they're going to be managing all three at the same time. Um, so we do have uh, we do have an owner rep now um, and they're supporting uh, all three projects uh, simultaneously. Um, and so a few other updates. Um, we went over the owner's rep. Um, no, that covers it. I don't want to cross over to PD and community center. So that kind of gives you a little bit of background. The open houses are going to be focused on a few components. It's going to give folks insight into the architect architectural designs of the building, which come back to DPW program requirements that have been defined and vetted and coordinated and we looked at all the surrounding towns, similar to PD Community Center, to kind of get an idea of best practice. Uh, it'll include a couple of variations of the site. We are, we have a site variation that decreases the size of the DPW lot, so actually shrinking it to make it less of a, of an industrial uh, pain point. Um, we'll go into the aesthetics again, all those components, and the guidance I'm giving to the project team, especially as we prepare, is aligned with the Fairhaven plan. Um, we're engaged with our community tree expert, parking analysis, um, stormwater management, um, all those key things that are so important that we want to demonstrate to the public that we are following the process as if we're an applicant. Um, so I'll pause there. Again, just want to take a few minutes of your time to provide a status update, kind of outline the steps, open houses, PDRC, planning board meeting, and then uh, hopefully swing a hammer sometime September, October. What do you mean by strength a lot? Most so right, that. yeah. So um, the DPW site. If I'm standing in front of the DPW, the leftmost, the third street section. You know where that fence line is and that burn. Mm -hmm. We want to bring the fence line thirty to forty feet below, oh, further away from third street. Got it. So actually, bring the fence line in and add more landscaping and natural area buffer on the third. Right. So you're not talking about changing the borders of the actual land no. itself, like saying that the the correct right. You're talking about just moving the, the yeah. fence in, but you, but the DPW, the official demarcation of the site won't change. Correct. Right. Okay. Status got it. So yeah. changing the improvements on the lot. Not, yes. Not the, yeah. Much better. The the lot. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, yeah. that is correct. Okay. Um, and yeah, we're really excited about that. I think it's a great idea. I'm for it, but we want to see what the public is for. What was the impetus for a change? Um, you know, that, that plan came before, you know, planning board within the last two years. And, you know, I thought that you know, on the way out, everybody felt pretty good about the plan. And then was, was there a specific pushback cost? Was it, you know, neighbor, you know, it was aesthetics? I'm just curious what kind of the, uh, some of the feedback that council yeah. was, was given initially. It's a great, it's a great comment. Um, and I'll try and bucket two top three items. First is cost. The way the initial plans were produced was, all new, all brand new. And if I recall, Sandy, don't quote me on this. Mm -hmm. I want to say that back in June, the total cost of all three buildings came in over 17 million. So, and to give you a frame of mind as of today, for every million dollars you don't spend, and these are today's dollars, I'm not talking June dollars, right? I mean, interest rates are now. So, but as of today, it's $445,000 of interest will be useful life for the right? So cost was a big one. There was um, assessments. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, that community engagement could have been handled a little bit differently um, in order to arrive at the point of completed drawings. And that was a, a, a fairly significant point. And then the third one was there were aspects of the designs that didn't necessarily have additional supporting data to assess to move forward. I'll give you a clear example. Um, there was, um, 
I recently found out that if we were originally they were talking about um, subdividing Hendrickson, the Hendrickson side, those five lots, and using that to offset the cost. There was one of this is what I've been told. This is hearsay. I don't. I, I was not in the meetings. I'm only heavily qualified that, right? But what I did find out in speaking with our community planners, I would rule that if that were to happen, that then changes the affordable housing calculus for the entire town. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how, and I don't know why. And I'm meeting with Hiram over early Mountain today. We're going to meet with them again because we have the open houses. They're going to be facilitated again. We're going to have professional facilitators at the house. But that is just one data point that I wasn't aware nor tracking. And so that's just one of numerous examples where certain decisions were made without the corroboration or coordination with other kind of areas that would be impacted. And so when you take all three of them, the guidance was, hey, you know, it's going to cost X dollars to, to do a new building. It's going to be a third cheaper to renovate. Then the question became, can we even renovate? And we had a structural assessment formed by an independent party to say that the building structure is sound. The word that they used from a legal perspective is that it's serviceable uh, and that it would last um, about the same amount of time if it was a new building. And then the question became, well, hey, do we think we can do a better design that's even cheaper than the third less than the new cost? And so all of that kind of cascaded. And as the research was done, um, we were able to come to that conclusion. Another significant point was at the department, at the BPW, there are areas of concern. So AOCs are these, help me out here a little bit, lawyer. AOCs are uh, qualifications of areas of concern from an environmental perspective. It requires an LSRP to come in, conduct investigative work to understand what the extent of the environmental issue is and what the remediations require. And there are a handful of AOCs on site. Uh, the extent of mitigation to the OCs is, is related to the extent of site work that's done. So that's another aspect that played into this. Um, and we actually found a, a, another underground storage tank that they weren't tracking for, which was a nice little curveball for us. Um, so, you know, all these different components, as I dug in and done the research, because I need to turn over every single stone as the government body's trusting me, the public's trusting me, you know, it just came out and all the information was presented and we go down this, the route, the route that we're going. Fair enough, appreciate it. So has there been, so we're going to have two, uh, Two, two public open houses. Yes. And so they'll be run similar, like you said, to the police department. Has there been any other public open discussion about this since the time? Because I know we took up the, the DPW site. I know it's got to be two years ago now. So, and, and so we, I, I know obviously now it's the scale and scope of it yeah. has obviously changed, but in that two year time period, has there been any engagement at all with the, with the public on it? So I can't speak before my time, right? Because okay. I was sworn in in January 3rd. Oh, so okay. from when I picked up the projects, every single step, and I mean every single step, has been briefed, doc briefed at the governing body meetings, uh, documented in uh, detailed PowerPoints and made available. We did get some resident feedback recently that the navigation on the website makes it a little challenging to reference key documents mm -hmm. and presentations. So we're working with Babs right now on, if you go into the Fairhaven website right now, there's a dedicated facilities project uh, within the department have, and everything is gonna be made there. Um, we've been communicating with the buzz and with you know emails, Nixle, I think is the right term. Um, once that centralized location on the website's created, We'll send a uh, communication out to that. There's going to be an FAQ section where oh, people okay. can actually write questions in. Not only about DPW, but PD and Community Center. So we're constantly engaging, constantly finding different digital touch points, physical touch points to, to make sure that this is communicated, especially where we've been going. Um, and I think the resident feedback has been positive in the sense of they appreciate how much community outreach has been. And do we do we specifically outreach to people that live on that block or yeah. on that block? Because I think it's important that those folks know that these open houses are happening and yep. that they get there. I mean, those are really the people that you know need to be in the loop. Hundred percent agreed. Yeah. And so part of the initial so the initial process to come prepared to the open houses 
was predicated on multiple factors. One of the central factors was I consider three primary streets engaged, right? You have Allen, yep. you have Maple, and you have Third. You do have Hendrickson to extent, but that, that landscaping buffer with those five lots is pretty significant. So what we did was not only engage with the previous facilities community at the level set, there were key points of contact that emerged during the facilities project effort. It's so Wilson Rodriguez, Becky Lombo, it was Kelly Flanagan, it was Tom Bull, it was Andy Churchia. So funneling through them, we did meetings, we did two separate oh, meetings good. already okay. with them. Good. So, and I treated them as mini open houses. Yeah, no, 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 that's great. That's but what that I'm, already yeah. happened. Yeah. Okay, good. So you think all those, yeah. yeah. I mean, I know some of those people personally, yeah. so just making sure they're in the loop and aware yeah. that this is all going on. And I did a follow-up email over the weekend confirming the open house's time to those groups. So good. yeah, it's a really good point. So um, thank you for the time. I'll keep um, the planning board posted. I'll definitely keep you posted as I communicate with Jimmy um, for TDRC. Um, when we are ready for capital review, obviously the architect will be here. We'll make sure that the site engineers are here the same way that we did um, the PD and the community center, and we'll come thoroughly prepared. But I appreciate your time. We're excited. Thanks, Councilman. Awesome. Good to see you. Yeah, you know, the, the open houses are where are they? Right in here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Yep. 9 a.m. Saturday, 5 30 on the 30th or 31st, Wednesday. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. So uh, before we start um, the administrative items, I, I want to recognize we have one member of the public here. I, I don't know if you if you have anything to bring before the, the board. Okay. Just want to make sure you have the opportunity. Not yet. yet. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, so we'll start with the uh, with the administrative items. You want to want to do it, Dave, or you want me to do it? Oh, sure, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, first on the uh, list is the approval of the resolution for minor subdivision for the borough of Fairhaven, Allen Street, Hendrickson Place, Block 45, Lots 10, 11, 12, Zone R5. Um, that was what last meeting was uh, last. the the yeah. um, the changing from three lots to to two, the subdivision and then to two yep. right, in order to accommodate the affordable housing. I guess we need uh, a motion. We need we need to approve the, the resolution as a path. I reviewed it before the meeting. I know it was distributed to the board before the meeting. Yeah, Just ask if there's any comments. I do have a quick question. I wasn't there. I read the resolution. And I approve of it. Am I still able to vote? Yep. Okay. You can. Yeah. Yes. Oh wait, no. I never had a problem. With that. I mean, it, I, I think you can. Yeah. Okay. But the the resolution would had already. <clears throat> so we already approved the resolution. This we is approved just, the application. Now we memorializing. Right, memorializing the changes that you guys suggested at the meeting. Did you okay? So we're we're not able to do that, Sam. So then we don't have a quorum for that. I don't know. I, I I still think if you have fully informed yourself of what's in the resolution mm -hmm. and you're ready, yeah, ready, ready to vote on. Okay. We uh oh, I'll make a motion to uh to approve the resolution. I'll second. Mr. Borderline. Yes. Bush. Yes. Mr. Mr. Paola? Yes. Mr. Rolf? Yes. And Mr. Anderson? Yes. Um, next, we have the approval of the minutes for both April 3rd and April 18th. Uh, April 3rd was the special meeting. Uh, April 18th was the regular meeting because I've had a chance to, to review. Any questions, comments, concerns? No. Uh, is, there, is there a motion to approve the minutes from these two meetings? Is there a motion to approve the, spe the meetings for the special meeting on April yes. 3rd, 2023? I, I'll make a motion to approve the April 3rd special meeting. I'll second okay. it. <laughs> Keep doing it. I know. You get the next one. <laughs> Ms. Bush? Yes. Mr. Fiola? Yes. Mr. Rall? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the, the minutes of the meeting for April 18th. Second. <laughs> yes. Mr. Piolo? Yes. Mr. Rall? Yes. And Mr. Anderson? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, again, uh, any speak now? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, what are the, that's purple, a, the purple flowers that hang over your retaining wall in the street? Oh, freaking cloth. 
they look great. They're so colorful. Yeah. Well, that was more of a, a board comment to the public. <laughs> but uh, keep up the good work. All right, that's a wrap. Got it. Nice. Yeah. 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 Yeah.